Here we have a TP-Link Wi-Fi router. It's a N450 router. The model is TLWR494, or sorry, TLWR940N. So that's this is what the box looks like. This is what the router looks like. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it all in and we're gonna get it set up on the internet. So hopefully if you're having troubles, maybe this video will help you out. Um, so I always like to start by plugging in the modem. So let's get started with that part. My modem is in the other room, so I have this long cable going to the other room. The other end is plugged into the modem, and this end is going to go into this blue port right here. I'll try to see if I can do this with one hand. Make sure it's in there nice and... Okay, so yeah, I felt it click. Nice and snug in there. It doesn't come out. So that modem cable goes into the blue uh, port named or labeled internet right there. And then, actually before we do that, we're gonna want the Cat5 to go into my laptop. So I'm gonna take the Cat5 here. This is, this is the one that came, it's like a short white Cat5 cable that came with the router, it was in the box. So you might need to buy one if you don't have one. This, it, it comes with one if you buy it new. Pretty much all routers do. I'm gonna plug it in one of these yellow ports. It doesn't matter which one. I always go for the first one because that makes sense to me. I always go with port one. Again, it doesn't matter. And the other end goes into the computer. Like this. Right there. Of course, your computer may be different, but there should be a port for it that looks similar to these ports. So now I take the power cable and plug that in all the way over here on the left side. This is kind of hard to do with one hand. Got it. So now that it's plugged in, there's a power button right there. Uh, you have a power button, you have a reset button. Well, it's not really, a, well it is a button, but it, you have to use a pen or something to, it, basically that resets um, all the settings to factory default. Then you have your Wi-Fi WPS button, and that's pretty much everything you have back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that button, the power button, to turn it on. You see the lights coming on up there. Turn this around. One thing I do want to show you on the bottom, there's a sticker with a bunch of information about this router. Um, if you're replacing an old router, like if you if you if you have the internet already set up at your house and you already have a router working and you're installing this new router, one thing you're gonna to want to get off of your old router is the MAC address. So for example, this one. You can see the MAC address right here. The second one down is 50C7BF2D61AC. Usually your router will have a sticker like that and it'll have the MAC address on it. So you're going to want to go to the bottom of your old router. Like don't get this one. Don't get your MAC address off your new router. Get it off your old router. And if you can't find it on your old router, it might be on the box if you still have that. Or if not, uh, there's... It's just easier to do it this way. It's not the end of the world, but I'll tell you how to fix it if you can't find the MAC address. But it is, we are gonna kind of do a trick with that MAC address that we're, we're gonna need the old one. So if you can get that, that'll help. So let's get this out of the way. So there we have it all plugged in and physically, physically it's ready to go. So let's go over to the computer and get it all set up. So once you're on the computer, you're gonna to wanna to open up a browser. You can use whatever browser you want. I'm gonna use Ed. Just open it up, and you can either go to http colon slash slash 
tplinkwifi.net. You can either type that in or you can go to 192.168.0.1. Either way will work. I'm going to use the IP address because that's the way I'm familiar with. So that'll bring up the administrative interface on your router. The default username and password should both be just admin, all lowercase. Type those in, go to login. Now you're going to get this quick setup. Um, you're going to go to next. We're going to go to dynamic IP, which it says in... Um, in parentheses is what is going to be used in most cases. And go to next. Uh, if you if you need to use one of these, you know that you need to use it. So it's, it's, if you have no idea, just choose dynamic. But if you have a static IP or if you use any of these other ones, you know it. So just most of us are going to use dynamic. Go to next. Quick setup, Mac clone. Um, I know I'm going to need to do this, but for some of you, you may not need to. So I'm just going to go to no, I do not need to clone MAC address right now because for some of you, it might work without it. So we're just going to continue. And those of us who do need to clone our MAC addresses, um, we'll do that after if we can't get on the internet, which I know I will need to, but we'll go next. So this is where you set up your wireless. There's only one wireless network. Um, your password, What this right here is what your network is going to be called, and this is your password. Um, I would recommend staying with this type of security, the WPA, PSK, WPA tube. I recommend staying with this option and setting your own password here. You can see you have to enter uh, characters between 8 or and 63 or hexadecimal characters between 8 and 64. So we'll see what more advanced wireless settings are. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mess with those unless you know what you're doing. So go ahead and just, you can change your name of your network. You can change your password and go to next. I'm going to leave mine as default. Congratulations. Finish. Now at this point, some of you may be able to get on the internet. So if you were to open a new tab, you should be able to go to google.com and get to a website. But if you're not able to, like me, we have a workaround that should work. As long as your ISP, your, your, your account, and your connection is all good with your ISP and your modem is online, if you're router is the one having issues like for example if you had a, a, a router plugged in previously a different one and you're upgrading to this one or you're just switching to this one then we might need to do a mac address clone now i told you in the earlier part of the video to get the mac address off of your old router so we're going to use that old mac address to do a mac address clone so what we're going to do, I'm going to have to find it here. It's going to be, maybe it's under network. Yep, under network. And then Mac clone over here. You see WAN MAC address and your PC's MAC address. We don't want to click this button. We don't want to click any of these buttons. Don't click these. So take this first one and you see the format. It's like it's two characters, then a dash, then two characters, then a dash. It just keeps going like that. You want to get rid of all that. And now we're going to type in the MAC address of our old router. So for mine, this won't work for you. If you type in exactly what I, what I type in, it won't work for you. You're going to have to type in the MAC address of your old router. 00-1D-7E-0D-E4 dash 4d now once i do that basically this is called mac address cloning or mac address spoofing it's either way and you can use it interchangeably basically this is tricking the internet service provider into thinking that your old router is still plugged in so when it when you're when you when you plug your router in 
and you try to connect to the internet, your ISP is going to say, oh, which router is this? And it's going to give it this MAC address. And, and if it's not the same as your old router, it's going to be like, wait a minute, this is not your router. What's going on? So now we're going to, instead of giving it the, the MAC address of our new router, which is what we're logged into right now, we're going to give it this old MAC address. It's not bad or illegal or anything. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just an easy, it's just a quick workaround. If you want, if you don't want to do this, or if you can't do this, like if you can't get your router's MAC address for whatever reason, you can just call up your ISP and tell them, hey, I got a new router. Can you reset my, can you, I got a new router. Also, that's all you have to tell them. I got a new router. Can you help me out? And they'll probably reset this setting and have you try again. It's probably all they'll have have you do it's not it's not that big of a deal if you just don't want to call them or whatever you can just do this MAC address cloning so I'm going to save this and the router is probably gonna uh, apply the settings and restart I'm, like, uh, I'm not sure if it's doing anything or not I'm gonna copy this just in case it doesn't work save it's not giving me any kind of warm and fuzzy feeling that's working let's go to a different page okay so it looks like it's assigning me a an ip address and the light my internet light on the on the router actually turned blue now so now i should be able to get to google there we are we're in google so we're on the internet now and yeah, so I just had to do a little little bit of a workaround. Again, you can either call your ISP and tell them you got a new router, or you can just do that MAC address spoofing. Let's just go through the settings real quick to see so you can get familiar with the interface and what's in here. Um, we don't want to do quick setup again. WPS. Um, WPS is it's supposed to be an easier way to add devices to your uh, Wi-Fi network. Um, you just basically press a button on the router. It's on the back of the router. And then you like hit a button on your device that you're adding. And it's supposed to be an easy way to add the device to the network. But I, not only I, but it's highly recommended by many people and many organizations that you disable WPS because it's got a security flaw, a major security flaw. Um, if you want to look into it, into reading, you can. Um, but just... Just know that it's, it's not a recommended thing to, to use. So I would I would recommend just disabling it. Network. Um, you can look at your WAN settings, your MAC clone, which we already did. LAN settings. You can change your IP address of your default gateway if you know how to do that. Wireless. You got your different wireless settings. This is where wireless settings right here. This is where you change the name of your Wi-Fi network. So, for example, when you open up um, when you open up your Wi-Fi, this is the name that'll show up. Wireless security. This is another recommended setting. You use WPA2. That's the most uh, secure version right now. Um, this is your wireless password. This is how you join the password to join your wireless network. Wireless MAC filtering, if you only want to allow certain MAC addresses to connect to your wireless network. Wireless advanced. I wouldn't recommend changing these unless you know what you're doing. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. Wireless stats. You get your DHCP. I'm not trying to give it like a full tutorial on everything. I'm just kind of trying to go through here. And just so you can see what's in the interface and what's in here. Uh, security. I don't want to try and make the video too long by talking too much because I will probably make more videos in the future on what all this stuff means. But right now we're just trying to see what's in here, get familiar with what the interface looks like. DNS, IP version 6, system tools, firmware upgrade. Sorry if you heard that noise, it was phone ringing. Statistics, 
internet now looks like it's everything. So we got it on the internet and we got it all plugged in. Um, if you have any questions about this router, if this video didn't help you, uh, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to help you out. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I have to make another video. Maybe if there's a, a trick that I didn't do or something, um, just leave a comment. Um, it's always nice if you didn't buy this router brand new. It's always nice to start with fresh settings because that really helps out big time. Like if your uh, default username and password aren't working, like admin and admin, if that's not working. Um, it's best to just plug the router in so it's got power and then hold in that power button until all the lights start flashing and stuff so that way you can get to factory settings and the, that would be like step one after you get it all plugged in just turn it on and reset it so it's if you you won't have many problems after that anyways that was the tp link tlwr940n setup initial setup and configuration. Thank you very much for watching.